all of us in this room, health communicators, whether we are working in a, a print ad or a 30 second TV spot uh, or a live workshop presentation, at some level, we are all storytellers or should be using the power of stories to affect change. So what better way than to bring to this conference a professional storyteller <clears throat> to share tips of the craft. So it's my pleasure, our first uh, keynote presenter is a New York Times best-selling author, multiple Bram Stoker Award winner, and a writer for Marvel Comics. He writes thrillers, including the hot right now Patient Zero and Dragon Factory, uh, which are also in development for TV. Uh, young adult fiction, mainstream horror, including Dead of Night and Ghost Road Blues. And his comics uh, in, for Marvel include Wolverine, Punisher, Black Panther, and my favorite, Captain America. Please welcome Jonathan Mayberry. So Jonathan, right away, um, I, we've got a picture of uh, Patient Zero uh, up on the screen. Um, tell us briefly, what's, what's that one about? Uh, it's the opening of a, of a series of novels uh, dealing with exotic terrorist uh, science um, and, a, and a special ops group that's, that's in place to, f to fight them. In this particular case, it's a prion disease um, that's been amplified to uh, essentially turn people into zombies. Uh, if you can think of Michael Crichton meets 24 with a little X-Files, you're pretty much in the right place. <laughs> that and sounds like a movie pitch. <laughs> it is a movie pitch. It's actually it's the pitch we used uh, um, to, to uh, shop this. Sony picked it up, and, and they, it's right now sitting at one of the major networks, and we're waiting, to, uh, waiting for a phone call. And uh, what appealed to me <clears throat> with Patient Zero, it's sometimes described as, uh, as a zombie thriller, zombie fiction, but it do, do, it's not like the traditional horror stuff. It's more of that science. I felt more like a terrorist thing. It made me believe that we really could have zombies out there sometime if science goes wrong. Well, you know, the funny thing about uh, horror, for those of you who have read horror or read a zombie story or a vampire story, uh, a good story is never about the monster. It's about what uh, the th you establish a threat, and then it's about solving that threat. In this particular case, the threat is really a medical threat. So it's really about solving that, that medical threat, preventing a pandemic. Uh, the zombies are you know, the hot monster of the week. Um, so they get to be the vehicle that drives the story, but uh, really the story is about the people and, and the crisis they're facing. And in this particular case, it's how science is going to uh, prevent a, a global disaster that, that bad science is throwing at them. So in terms of lessons learned from being a, a professional storyteller, uh, Obviously, you're at the ePatient Connections Conference. Your, your latest is Patient Zero, but other than the word patient in common, I mean, what can we learn as we're creating health-related commercials, public service announcements, trying to educate people? I mean, how can we learn from what you do writing fiction? Well, storytelling is storytelling. It doesn't matter whether you're writing fiction or nonfiction. There's, there's always going to be some key elements that, are, that have to be there, and if you understand what those elements are, virtually anyone can tell a compelling story. Um, one of, the, three, one, one of the, the most important things is that all stories have three acts. Even if it's an anecdote, it has three acts. Uh, the, the initial uh, act, however brief, establishes the characters, the world in which they're in, and move them toward the crisis. The middle of the story is, you know, what is that crisis? What is that, that thing that needs to be learned, solved, dealt with, acquired? Um, and the third act is, is how that acquisition or so solution or a challenge is met in a way that um, uh, makes the characters grow, change, in, a, in hopefully in a positive way. And that's the second part of, of good storytelling, is all characters, or primary characters in a story, need to go through an arc in which they change. You, you can't, uh, if, if you're doing a commercial for uh, uh, a medication, and by the end of the, the, the commercial, somebody is not interested in taking that medication, or, or you're not showing that, that person having benefited from it, the character has not gone through growth. It's, there's no arc to it. Um, that's why a commercial where somebody's just saying, I took this and it, it did me a world of good, there, there's no arc. They're just giving you third act. There's, there's no growth. There's no complexity to the story. It's a statement, and it's sold entirely on the charisma of the actor. And those sorts of things, I know as a consumer, don't sell a product to me. Uh, even if it's an expert out there selling a product, that's not going to do it because there's no arc and there's no acts. They're just trying to jump, shortcut it. Uh, it made me just think, it just happened this last week, and I've, uh, my oldest daughter's in seventh grade and apparently uh, has an English teacher that's beginning to teach her some of this because uh, Harry Potter was on TV, one of the Harry Potters was on TV, 
Uh, she'd just seen the Percy Jackson uh, movie and was reading a book, and she says, Dad, have you noticed that all the things that uh, the kids watch, it's the reluctant hero theme? And I guess that's relating to uh, <laughs> uh, you know, Harry Potter being the young kid who doesn't want to be the one to save the world or whatever it is that grows over time. Well, yeah, the, the reluctant <laughs> hero is, is uh, the flip side of also the damaged hero, somebody who is unable to move forward or thinks they're unable to move forward because uh, whatever has happened to them, it's usually negative, has, has mired them in a certain viewpoint, a certain worldview. And it's only through the experience of the story that they learn that there is either a bigger world, a better solution, a healthier choice. Um, and that's, that's the point of the story. The Harry Potter we meet at the beginning of the story is vastly different from the one we meet at the end. That's great. And actually, one, there's, a, there's a series, the James Bond series. Only the last two James Bond films ha have been critically acclaimed because that character is going through emotional and psychological growth. The previous, the previous to that, James Bond was the same first scene and last scene, and therefore, it's just how many gadgets you can throw. It, it, it was killing its own series. Right, right. So uh, we've got the, the three-act structure, the arc of the character. How do we develop that character arc? Is it dialogue? Is it action? Is it, like, how do we do that? Well, dialogue is important. Um, writing good dialogue in a very short format is tricky. One of the toughest things to do is write a really good line. It's easier to write a good script than a single a good line. Um, but it's, it's uh, situation and reaction that, that really do it. Uh, for example, I, if I, somebody had uh, suggested as an exercise uh, cooking uh, how I would do an, uh, an ad for something. So we'll, we'll take a male enhancement drug as an example. <laughs> okay. Seem to be on the television, no matter when I turn television on, <laughs> there's male. I would, do, I would break that into three segments. Instead of one commercial, I'd break it into three short commercials. The first one, you know, uh, may, maybe a, a couple with a little bit of tension going on there. And then just the slightest look toward, you know, from one to the other. It doesn't have to be dialogue. It can be said with dialogue, but it doesn't have to be. The second, you know, after some of the show, you'd come back and see the two of them maybe sitting there, um, a, a hint that uh, they've either just come out of the bedroom or there's been some fun going on and they're smiling and laughing. And again, end it with another look, and then we'd, we'd jump in later on, and we see the two of them looking totally exhausted, smiling, maybe sitting on, on, on the, the front porch swing. Now, we don't, we don't say that they're making love. We don't say that he's taking necessarily a pill. The, the, it, it could be shown uh, lower. What we're showing is initially there was, you know, uh, perhaps a problem between the relationship, but look, a solution's there. And then we see the, the effect of, of, of that potential solution and then we find a greater benefit. So they're learning that their lifestyle, because we're coming back to it in chapters, their lifestyle is improving. The characters are growing and becoming more confident and happy as a result of that story arc. Dialogue could be just a line or two, almost incidental, um, but it's, it's the challenge and how that challenge uplifts them that makes the, uh, and uplifting, by the way, is not intended as a pun, <laughs> but it does work. It does so. fit in the story. <clears throat> well, that, that's a great, um, Great transition because I selected a couple of uh, videos for you to take a look at. Uh, Jonathan has not seen these before, so we'll see what he thinks of them. And uh, be interested to get your insights whether you think they're effective or not uh, you know, from the storytelling theme. Uh, the first one we will uh, queue up happens to be from uh, the biggest selling uh, drug uh, around the world. And they are using uh, what they call my story as the campaign right now. So it'll be interesting to get your, your reaction. It was December 19th, 2005. It was the day my life changed, but I had no idea what was coming. I was clearing out a warehouse of antique and collectible toys in Brooklyn, New York. I had hired a couple of guys to help, but they didn't show. So I started clearing the warehouse myself. It was only two or three minutes after I started that I felt a tightness in my chest like I couldn't catch my breath. I was with my father when he had his heart attack, so I suspected that I might be in trouble. I was afraid I was having a heart attack, my heart attack, at 50. I went into self-preservation mode. There was a hospital a few minutes away and I drove myself. I remember thinking about my wife. I should have done more to take care of myself. I should have paid more attention to what I was eating. I should have quit smoking, should have exercised more. The doctor said I was having a heart attack and they took me to the operating room right away. When I woke up, there was my wife, Madeline, and my mom and dad. There were a lot of I love yous going around. 
That was my wake-up call. Before I left, my doctors recommended some lifestyle changes. They also prescribed a number of medications for my heart health. One of them is Lipitor. Okay, so there's our first uh, clip. Uh, what do you think? Well, it has some pros and cons to it. Uh, beautifully shot, like the Rembrandt lighting. Um, they, they, as, as a sales pitch to me, it would lose, a couple, lose me on a couple of points. The, the first image you see is his face. And it, you know, it's an interesting looking guy, he's, he's, he's an interesting speaking voice. The next shot is a profile. It disincludes the viewer. We're no longer involved. If he was looking at something, if he was looking at a picture of his wife, looking at a window, looking at anything other than just a profile, it would, it would continue to include me. Uh, and if, if I'm not included in the story, then I don't care about the story. It comes back and again switches angles and, and we're included again. But now I'm having to reacquire the story. Um, that, so you know, there's a little pro and con there on, in terms of, of the way in which the reader is included. You want the reader to feel like they're a part of the story, or the viewer to feel like they're a part of the story. Second, um, as much as I love the lighting, and I, I love the black and white, the black and white really works. I, 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 if I was editing that, I would take that music out. It, it, the music is it's too cliche to sell it to, uh, this is gonna sound horribly macho, but a, as a manly man, <laughs> um, I, I wouldn't, I, that music doesn't sell it to me. Uh, I would rather hear a little bit of jazz. Maybe, maybe even a little bit of blue. You could probably get into uh, some faint blues there. Something where it's not a, not the sort of music you're expecting to hear while you're waiting for a funeral. Um, I want to hear something that's a little more vibrant, that's got some pop to it. So in terms of, of the visual storytelling, the visual storytelling didn't, it didn't succeed. It, it, it was a pretty ad, beautifully shot, but it, it does, does not maintain the connection between uh, the, uh, the character and the reader, in fact, uh, viewer. In fact, instead of turning turn to a side angle, it would have been better to draw in very slowly, or maybe even a jump cut very slowly to show the earnestness in this guy's face and eye. How about story arc? I mean, character arc and story structure. It could have been cut down by about a third, but it's a good story. It, there's three acts? Yeah, it has three acts, and it has a happy ending. We love happy endings. Um, to, to pump that happy ending, he needs to change his inflection because it's not happy inflection. So it has three act structure. It's, it's, a, it's, it's almost, I would say, a, a 90% of a, of a superb commercial. The last 10% I, I would change in order to include more of the emotional component. And this, this actually speaks to one thing in, in writing. Writing, like, like any, any industry where we want someone to, to do or feel what we're saying, it's benign manipulation. Uh, people are afraid of the word, manip word manipulation, but if you're writing a cookbook, you want people to go out and, and prepare something. If you're, if you're selling a, a product, you want people to buy it. If I'm writing a, a, a horror novel, I want people to have shivers. <laughs> so we are manipulating the emotions of, of the reader and for their benefit, because it's, it's what they're coming to us for. Anytime we break that connection, we, we lose the pitch that we're, we're attempting. Great. Now, we're gonna show another one. It's a, <clears throat> it's a public service announcement. Uh, it has to do, well, I, I'll, I'll let it play. Went viral, millions of views, and there's been some debate. Is this a story that's being told in this PSA, or is it just a beautifully shot piece, and that's why it works? So we'll take a look at that next. Now, am I the only one crying? <laughs> that is a flawless piece of storytelling. Wow. 
Um, it, tell, it tells everything you need to know. The I mean, you have the, a clear first act all the way up to the point where he starts to lose his smile. As soon as he recognizes the threat, we enter, we step from act one to act, act two. Act two is all the action. The other characters become involved in the story, but we don't yet know how it's going to react. They're, 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 all the, the plot lines are starting to collide together. The point at which the character goes, uh, the characters go through a moment where they realize what has to be done to resolve the story satisfactorily is when we step from act two to act three. And they, together, they clasp the seatbelt around him. The, the, we have the big explosive drama, and you have an ending that makes sense based on the setup. It's, it's, it is a flawless piece of advertising. I wouldn't change a thing on it. Without any dialogue. Clear, <laughs> You could have written 10,000 words of dialogue and you would not have touched what was in that. That's great. Uh, you would not have improved it because you, you, it's, it's, a, it's ballet. You don't need di dialogue in ballet. And this is essentially a ballet piece where it says everything it needs to say. Dialogue would interfere with the process going in the mind of the reader. This is exactly what I mean by engaging the view viewer or reader. This is allowing the viewer or reader to participate in the storytelling as opposed to getting an info dump. So because the reader is, is fully in, involved in the storytelling, um, the reader comes away with it knowing more than could possibly have been said if, if there had been dialogue. It was Fantastic. Brilliant. Fantastic.